Hi, I'm Delusion Dispeller. We're on number five, and I may not get through all 12 of them today, but um, or at least not right now. So I'm going to try to keep talking. You know, try to keep them short like I have been, but I do have to get to work soon. So anyway, my narcissistic ex-husband, when he was asked to talk about anything in therapy, I was always painted as the bad guy for not doing as a good Christian wife was supposed to do. I was compared to his mother, his sister, his female friend, and compared as being less of a woman than they are. They're the better Christian women. If she would just learn from them, I keep telling her, you know, my mom can teach you how to do this. My friend can teach you this. You know, like, I did not know anything. And I'm sorry, I did know quite a bit, but I was belittled so much that I didn't feel very confident in being who I really was anyways. Because he put down everything I did and it was never good enough, which is typical of narcissists. You always feel like you're trying to attain this level that you'll never get to. Um, number six, my ex also painted himself as the good family man, the good hard-working man. He loved to tell people how he was just everything every woman would want and what was wrong with me that I didn't appreciate him for being the wonderful man that he was. He would brag about how he was the perfect citizen and neighbor and how all his neighbors when he was younger would joke and call him you know cute little names and they admired him so much and he was so helpful around the neighborhood and blah 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 that's all you heard from it was bragging about how wonderful he was what a great helper he was um no thanks to his abusive sperm donor he developed a very big head anytime he did a good deed for someone and he enjoyed telling people what a good person he was for doing it he often bragged about how he could fix anything and how everyone could call him at any time of day or night and he'd be there to help. Never mind the fact that things were falling apart in our home, in our marriage. I couldn't get the children to doctor appointments because he would take the car and go help everybody else. Um, I couldn't buy groceries because he had the car. And things, as I said, were falling apart in my home. So yeah, I became resentful for sure because, you know, his first allegiance should have been to his family and his wife, not everybody else that had problems all the time. As long as he was out proving what a wonderful man he was though, um, that's what came first to him. That's what mattered most to him was this image he was trying to portray of himself. Um, number seven, when the therapist questioned him about why my children were not taken to doctors when they needed to be, um, which was a point that distressed me a lot. He explained to the therapist, like I told her, I already know what Doc's gonna say. He'll just put you on an antibiotic and send you home. He acted like he knew better than the doctors. He already knew what they were going to diagnose me with. That's typical of narcissists. Um, number one, they have all knowledge. And number two, they act like nobody ever taught them that knowledge. They just sort of had it. They were born with it or got it through osmosis. Who knows? Um, as soon as I get back from the doctor with the kids, he'd say, Well, was I right? What's the verdict? It was a see, told you thing. You know, to I told you so if the kids were sick and they got antibiotics. But if they weren't, I would tell them, well, they were really sick or they were really hurt. And he'd be, oh, okay, well, so they fixed them. That's good. Brush it off. Not, oh, well, I was wrong. No, never. <laughs> they can't be wrong. Um, he would not admit that he was wrong. And he loved to assume everything and, and just believe that he was right. Uh, he always assumed that everything would be okay, even when it wasn't okay. Unfortunately, I almost died because he wouldn't drive me to the hospital when I had severe mastitis. I almost died because he would not take me. He said, I have to work in the morning. I need my sleep. When his friend heard that, she came over and she was livid. She said, what the H is wrong with you? Why would you not take your wife to the hospital? What the heck has gotten into you? And she took me to the hospital. There was only one doctor in this entire hospital that knew how to treat me. Nobody else had the knowledge or the ability to do it. So I would not be here talking to you had that one Indian doctor not been there and known what mastitis was and how to treat it. They gave me high doses of antibiotics. I think I had a staph infection starting or something. Um, I don't know, but I was very, very sick. Um, and it was all because he already knew what Doc would say. Countless times the children were beating on each other, bleeding, bruised from doing whatever when I was at work and I'd come home and I'd say, what's wrong with them? Why do they have this gash in their head? Why are they burned? Why did this happen? 
Kids are kids. It's sibling rivalry. Let them fight it out. They'll be fine. That was his theory. Doctors used to literally scold me for bringing my children in due to injuries and illnesses late. And they were like, what on earth were you thinking? Why did it take you so long to get here? And I would tell them, my husband won't let me bring them in. And they would tell me, you either take the kids and put them in the car and bring them here no matter what he says, or we are calling Child Protective Services on you. So you see how, unfortunately, the person that's trying to do the right thing tends to get turned on because they're afraid of the narcissist. They're afraid of what might happen if they disobey. And I was. Um, or I'd get berated and belittled and made fun of and mistreated if I dared to go against his all-knowing, powerful knowledge of what was wrong with the kids instead if I would take them to the doctor. So stay tuned. I will tell you some more.